Hello, this is Alan, Alice on the Bookshelf. I'm here with a book review of this novel without a name by Dong Fao Hong. I believe I got that uh, pronunciation correctly. Let's see if it's translated. Uh, this book came out in the... Uh, it's a, written by a female uh, Vietnamese and uh, uh, translated or of Bon Hu Long and Nita P McPherson, who both live in France. And this was uh, by Penguin Books, and it came out, let's see, uh, in 1995. So, novel without a name, the, late, the author, let me tell you a little bit about the author. The author is female, as I said, Vietnamese. She fought in the Vietnam War, and then she was in the war between Vietnam and China in 1979. She wrote this book in 1989, 10 years uh, later, and it was banned in Vietnam, and she was thrown into prison for a short time. She left Vietnam and Currently, he lives in France. He's written a couple other uh, uh, novels, but this one uh, is is about a gentleman by the name of Vietnamese, North Vietnamese, uh, by the name of Quan. Quan has been in the military for ten years. So in the novel, he's twenty eight years old. It was idealistic, opportunist. And do something for the fatherland and for the communist cause. So he is in a camp, a base camp in North Vietnam. And he, this is actually set, let me backtrack, this is set during, towards the end of uh, the Vietnam War, which is in 75. So he is, Quan is given permission to leave and go to his village, take like a month, month and a half off, and just go through his village and give him a little map of, uh, he has to go to the commander's uh, post where the commanders are and give him a little map on a uh, matchbox. <laughs> so he said it's hard to, hard to see, he didn't know the directions a lot of times because when he said, in the book, when he's in, when you're in the jungle, and you yell, nobody will hear you, at all. So he makes his travels, and the book is mostly about his travels, and how there in one part he visits. Well, let me take that back. I'm sorry. I didn't start. Let me read you a couple pages from this. I pressed my face to the earth. Yes, master. Today I learned the lesson. Oh, happiness. The fog soaked into my clothes. Prickly grass tickled me, scratching my feet, my legs. I could feel the sun burning in my scalp, my back, the shape, nap of my neck. The delicious warmth washed over my head, my body in million droplets of lights. I feel my pale skin red in the sun, the pleasure of it, just being alive. I rode over, the sky being red through my eyelids, my cheeks, my necks, my chest, my arms. Everything was gently warmed. The sun flooded me like a tide. I remained a long time like that, without moving, without sleeping, floating in half unconscious of the state. Memories glided across my dazzled eyelids. There were faces, landscapes, murmurs, laughter. They seemed to float in smoke, pierced by a long, thin shaft of light, like a sparkling thread of glass. I have never known happiness. So this, so this was it. Just this moment, I had never known freedom. Maybe this was it. Just this instance. Who would ever understand? Words, words are slippery as eels. Just when you think you grasp them, they slide out of your hands and disappear into the mud. But this grass is 
razor sharp at my side, this blue sky above my head. This was real, and I was happy. And he, he goes on like that, he goes on like that, kind of daydreaming, and about thinking about his childhood, about where he grew up, about his friends, that, and the good times they had together, playing and everything. And then he, as he says, he reads the footpath through the forest, more in 22 on the map. 300 yards down the path, he saw a board bearing across the word shelter. And map in hand, he walked towards it. So this is a, he goes into the shelter and meets this lady who only job is to t get the dead bodies and bury them. The dead bodies from the war, <laughs> bury them. And that's the job. And uh, she wants to lie with them. But he said he came because the Americans put something in the air which caused them to be impotent. The book goes on and it comes upon his, uh, his friend that he grew up with. And they both were excited about going into the war. And his friend was in <clears throat> in this um, side jacket ward because they also suffered from PTSD. And <clears throat> the North Vietnamese did. So he goes he goes into that camp and finds out this and uh gets his friend out of the hospital and then he goes back to his village and talks about this village how his estranged father told him that his brother had died in the war and Juan didn't he know that didn't he know his brother died in the war later on in the story he gets uh, he finds Mel and it was written by his girlfriend who uh, wrote him like 16 letters they never and they were never delivered to him so he gets on a train he's traveling on there's a train and bus there's a train and so gets on the train and two gentlemen enter the train and he's listening to their conversation And let me find some uh, verses for you. One gentleman is named Mr. Lai. The other one is named Mr. Wu. That's B-U-U. -U. And they are having a, uh, as I said, a conversation. One of them says, Before one out of every ten of them, you could find at least seven who were honest, civilized. Even during the worst intrigues, at least they feared public disgrace. Now the ones who hold the reins are all in the ramorous, who never even learned the most basic morals. They study their Marxist-Leninism in the common pillage of vegetable gardens and rice fields with Marx blessing. And the name of the class struggle, they seduce other men's women. And let me go on here. I'm sorry for the pause. Uh, I haven't seemed to have lost my place here. The two young tricksters call the ticket collector comrade. The ticket collector dressed the same way. In reality, though, the first case was a relationship between delinquents and the agent of the law. The second case, now that was a relationship between master and servant. If the party is faithful servant of the people, as Ho Chi Minh says, then the ticket collector is just a servant's servant. From is that clear? So the word comrade can mean many things. 
from a logistic point of view, it's a lie. From a historical point of view, it's an adaptation. And from a practical angle, well, it's just the leader's trick. In a civilized society, we should try to make the form correspond to the substance. You're so naive, the fat little guys said it. We don't always need to have civilized society. Then the person said, I don't follow you. I don't follow you. I don't follow you. Have the little fat man. Stop repeating it. You're over 50, aren't you? Civilization is a long, difficult journey, and we don't have much time. Life is short. We got to find another way. What barbaric ideas. It's all one. Uh, short found one to laugh. That's exactly what being in power is all about. You're just like a woman, oversensitive. I am like I am. Have you ever seen an ostrich faced with danger that kind their heads in the sand? They think sand can make the reality disappear. But you and I, we went off to fight for an idea. That's right, that's the understandable truth. You, me, and many others are abandoning everything for an idea. That came from a 17-year-old consciousness. Once you're over 50, there's a bunch of moldy old memories. That idea, well, the kids need it. And it's all we need to turn them into monks, soldiers, or cops. And it worked. Whether it was revolutionary uniform or the National Police cap. Words are like everything else in life. They're born, they live, they age, they die. So when you and I let the city Kwong try to join the party, what was born and what died? Look, we were 15 years at the time. We were young. The revolution was also young for us. We sang our, our way from one battle to the next, the clamorous chant. How did that go again? Oh, yeah. You come from a land steeped in salt and bile, and I'm from the village with plows worn down by stones. Lovely lyrics, huh? Words have flowered and bear fruit. Now they start to fade. That's the universal law. Revolution, like love, blooms and then withers. But revolution rots much faster than love, comrade. The loss is true. The more we need to believe in it. That's the art of governing. Spread the word. Now that now that you intellectuals job, we pay for it. And the book goes on when he Ron returns back to his camp and they have a couple of battles, and they also, he has to, because he's a captain, he has to uh, dispute between other uh, soldiers in the camp, and then he has to lie in a coffin at night because of the tigers. They eat uh, soup made with orangutan. You see the little paws dancing in the soup. They also, a link shows up on the table, but they don't shoot it because they're, it might cause them to have, a, you know, what's the word? Uh, it's a bad omen. Yeah, it's a bad omen. So this is a very good book. I highly recommend it. And thank you for watching.